first of what would be the army discussions on the Barefoot Minches channel for the old world. And I'm not going to say Total War this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, a mistake made too often. And I've not even played Total War that much. So, oh, I've played it a lot, but just not in years. So, today we're going to be going over the Beast Herds because we've literally just played a game with beasts. Yeah. And there was a few rules interactions that sort of triggered thoughts and I thought we could have like a decent discussion on this. Now, what we're not going to do is give a super tournamenty guide on it. It's, and we're also not going to... Like, I'm not going to name every like weapon skill or... Well, probably the weapon skill. But if it it's not, doesn't matter do about the ballistic you, skill, I'm not going to give you the ballistic You're skill. not going to mention every single stat line. It's more about... That's a more succinct feel, way of saying it. It's more the feel of that unit and how it plays and what your thoughts are of how it looks. But, you know, it's not going to be like... It's movement three with weapon skill nine. Yeah, exactly. What are the key features of each thing? So if you want this in audio only format, that is an option on the Patreon. You get like a link to uh, a podcast version of it that's just accessible through podcast apps. Um, and yeah, let's get into the Beastman. So let's start at the best place to start, the end, with the army special rules. Like, <laughs> bit of an odd layout of all of the books, but let's not focus too much on that. So... Main army special rules, let's go through the, the main ones, right? So that is, I would say, the Gaze of the Gods, prim Primal Fury, and then Mark of Undivided, because a bunch of stuff has Mark of Undivided, right? Yeah, so pretty much a little bit of a change that Beastmen now don't get to pick marks. They're just giving them Mark of Undivided, and they are Does stuck. every single unit have it? Pretty much. Not right. every single unit, but pretty much. The majority of units have the Mark of Chaos Undivided, Yes. Uh, which kind of fits in a little bit with the idea of them. Because they worship all the gods, right? And yeah. They, uh, and just like tribally worship them. Yeah, and although some are like touched by different gods, you you really, based on like the lore and the fluff, you don't really see herds that are touched by Nurgle or herds that are touched by a corn. What you really see is like one that yeah. is uh, shown in the pantheon and then is exalted upwards. Right. Um, so I think that, that for me that that feels like a really nice change. Yeah, I, I'm not too mad yeah. at it, and it's it's actually a very good mark as well. It's reroll any failed fear, panic, or terror. Now, panic you've on some things got a low leadership, and we'll, there's a bit of interaction with a few units on leadership that you might think are low and aren't. Yep. But rerolling failed fear is always useful, and panic useful definitely. Yeah. Especially for like small units um gaze of the gods is a once of a turn sort of like buff that you can give yourself stupidity to getting plus one weapon skill and leadership now it's really useful if you get a six really useful if you get a five or a four but if you get a one the stupidity can really bite you in the ass um i think there's a trap there as well because if you roll a one you get stupidity if you roll a one again, you get minus one leadership. Yeah. So you start making yourself stupider. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not too frequent to get that one, but what I always find when I'm like playing my hordes, that one just like neuters your movement. And in a game that's so focused on movement. Yeah. And I know you've got to then fail your stupidity test, but I'm just terrified of being stupid now. Because it's bit me in the arse so many times. So I, I use this sparingly. Like if I'm already in a combat, I might do it. If I'm, if like, oh, I'm going to lose this combat anyway, but I need to charge, I'll do it. Yeah. What I are think your thoughts on that? That's for me. Do you know what I mean? I, I only really use it on my combat characters. I don't think there's a huge need on my sort of like casters. Yeah. Uh, it really is geared towards like, you, you combat lords, basically. Which I'm not mad at, right? No, no, That's... not at all. But, like, there are times when I've chosen to roll on it and then gone, oh, is that the right thing to do? But I've already mm. decided I'm going to roll on it. And luckily, I've not been hit by stupid yet, but I will do, and it will change. Well, it's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the randomness of this rule. It, could, it can be really good, and it can be pretty clutch, but... Be careful about using it, I think, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just go, oh, it's my command phase, I'm using it. Think about what you want to do with that unit before you make the decision just to roll on it. Yeah. So those are two things that I have had direct experience of myself through my Chaos Warriors. Primal Fury, I've only had that by 
hating it, <laughs> playing against the beast. So, Phil, do you want to tell us what Primal Fury does? Primal Fury is throughout the entire book and throughout the entire units in the Beastman section. So, at the combat stage, the combat phase, at 1.1, 1. 1, you... So much, before impact hits. Before, before impact hits, before everything else, you roll a, a leadership test. If you pass it, the unit then can re-roll uh, ones to hit. Yeah. Not all fails, just ones. There is literally no downside to rolling this. Yeah. Like you don't you don't fail the leadership test and then you start taking break tests. You just roll the leadership test. If you pass it, great. Benefit. You know, you benefit. If you fail it, doesn't matter. Yeah. And this will tie more into although you've got quite a weak leadership on some units. Say like Warband, which is a, a core game rule on a lot of things, is gonna boost your leadership based on your rank bonus. So you actually can have quite high leadership for some of your, like like your gore, and it can be going off all the time and stacking with other things that I think is really useful. Yeah, so gore in particular with this, their leadership six base. So you might be thinking, oh, I'm never going to get that Four render seven. Oh, he's not four render, is he? The true, true horn, horn is a seven. So even then, you're only going to get that probably about 50% of the time because the average on two dice is seven. Yeah. But because they have Warband, you get to plus their rank bonus, the, the unit's rank bonus, to your leadership. Yeah, and that's going to be throughout the army. So yeah. Worth and, mentioning now, even. And they also have Horde, which means they can get an extra rank bonus to what's stated in the rule book. Yeah. So if you're running big units, they're looking at leadership 10. Um, so therefore, Primal Fury, Fury is going off really off, often. Yeah, quite frequently. Yeah. Um. Foe render, we sort of mentioned it. This is on some units. Basically, if you pass your Primal Fury, your hand weapons become minus two armor piercing. You tend to fail leadership on, a, <laughs> on an 11, Phil. So Phil hasn't had a great experience with this, but I think it can be quite useful. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's a nice rule. Uh, my first thoughts on it was none of my heroes need any magic weapons or they don't need any great weapons because I'm just going to pass that leadership and I'm going to get minus two AP, which is really quite good. I think that's the good sweet spot for AP there. Yeah. But if you fail it, your character has got a hand weapon and is dinking off every single bit of armour <laughs> that he comes across. Yeah. So... Right, let's let's go on to characters then, since we're talking about these. And these are the main are these the main ones with foe render, or is it? Does anyone else have it? Um, so there's a few units that have it, but the main ones really are other, other lords and hero choices. Right, yeah. Let's, so let's just go through the, these then, right? So you've got a beast lord and a war gore. Obviously, this is coming out in your fifty percent of characters. Both have got war bands, so will benefit from being in a ranked up unit with additions to the leadership. To get up to a maximum of 10. Yep. So that's excellent both for your Primal Fury, for getting Foe Render. Now, I would always go with the Beast Lord here, at least one in the army if you've got the capability. And that's, unless you've got, say, like a, a Doom Bull. Yeah. Right. And that's because Lord level characters, you're a Chaos character. You need to be the biggest, hardest guy around, right? That's sort of what I always think. Yeah. And they've got, a, you know, I think. One of the things for me here is that both of them have now got toughness five. Yes. Which is really good. Like, really, really good. Makes them quite tough. If you think that the standard toughness is three across most of the board, yeah, I think toughness five just makes them durable. Yeah, much better. Much yeah. durable. Well, that's like Chaos Lord levels and the, the Beast Lord's strength five. So, say, like, if you've got a great weapon or something... He's going to be strength seven, yep. even without adding anything else. Now, you quite like, at the moment, because you love failing Primal Fury, you quite like one of the magic weapons on here that gives you your leadership, don't you? Yeah. To your strength. So that is the Primal, Primeval Club. Primeval Club. Yeah. So that's poisoned. Strength is your leadership. So that yep. would be, your, if you're in a ranked up unit, your, strength, your leadership will be 10. Yep. AP minus three and it's not strikes last. And I think that is one of the key things is you, you're better than a great weapon and not strikes last. And can use a shield with it. 
Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. So with with beastmen, this is traditionally throughout every edition. They have very low armor. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to get like a better armor save, heavy armor, shield, and that you've got a four up save, not great, but not terrible as well at the same time. So it, it's got a massive draw to that, and you know it's minus three AP. Yes. Um, one of the things that when you get primal fury off, you will uh, uh which then comes with foe render for the beast lord. You don't get an additional minus two AP. Because it only works on hand weapons. Only right? works on hand weapons. Not an additional hand weapon. Not an additional hand weapons. So it only works on hand weapons. Yeah, so that that's the one that Phil's been running with. Have you got any other thoughts on magic items to put with that, or have you not? Is it just that that you've done up to now? So I, I've looked at that one. Um, I think this there's one for you here. Banner of Outrage. Reroll your primal fury. <laughs> yeah, so that's for you. that's a really really good banner, and you can use that as well with one of the enchanted items, which is Horn of the True Beast, which gives an eighteen inch bubble. Of people being allowed to use your leadership for primal fury only for primal fury yes so as you start seeing you can start stacking things to make it almost a given that, that primal fury, fury is going, going to go off yeah yeah so i think that's a good use of a beast lord would you've been trying out putting him on a chariot now that reduces his toughness to four doesn't it yeah um because you get the the toughness of the... The toughness of the chariot. Oh, that's how I've read it. You get the toughness of the chariot because he, he adds to the crew of the chariot. Yes. Um, I found it... It's, it's quite... I've only been using a Tuscore chariot at the moment. Uh, 85 points. Makes really mobile. Yeah. Uh, impact hits is really good. Yeah. D6 it, plus one impact hits from that heavy chariot. Now, it doesn't capitalise on your warband rule, really, other than no. the fact that you can re-roll his charge distance. From having warband, so that's quite nice because you've not got swift stride on it. Yeah, yeah. The impact hits is really nice going first, but I think as we get into some of what the warband units are, we'll have a look at what they can actually do, and maybe, maybe you want to be in a warband like ranked up unit. I think that's where I'm going to move and start playing a little bit around with that and see how I feel with him being in a in a ranked unit. And and I think it's worth trialing both. He's certainly not done badly. Yeah. Like, I mean, in our last game, like, Phil Gore on Chariot was a killer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolute killer. Now, a War Gore, that is one of your locations to access as Standard Bearer in, or a Battle Standard. Yeah, Battle Standard Bearer. Yeah. Which I think is definitely necessary in in the old world yeah. now. Like, or pretty much always, I would go with, even if it's just a cheap Battle Standard Bearer, Get your Wargore, it's 80 points for a Battle Standard Bearer, even if he does nothing else but stand around and be in the right place to me- let you reroll break tests, he's been worth it that game. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, I, I've, I've not used one a lot um, in the last couple of games I've been playing, but I think I'm definitely going to have to start finding the 80 points. Yeah, 80 points. Min- it, for that. Even if it's just minimum, 80 points. Yeah, uh, 80 points just for that person to stand around and start allowing those re-rolls. Yeah. So then onto Beast Shamans, you've got 150 points for the level 3, 65 for the level 2, or for the level 1. You can upgrade them both to level 4 and level 2 for 30 points respectively. Um, They can go on chariots, not a massive amount of um, like options for them. No. Now one thing we missed out on Beast Lords that is also available to shamans and I'm remembering this because you have done it on your shamans is mutations and the one that stands out to me is slug skin for most people <laughs> the yeah. minus one to hit by shooting weapons against a unit right? no minus one to hit in combat for the entire unit oh is it in combat yeah right there's pelt of midnight which is minus one to shoot at them so um, there's the either Italian, there's either or and you can't take the same on you can't take both on one model one unit because it's too many points yes so that's a, a good option if your caster's going to be hanging around units or your beast lord just has some points left over put in, in especially for a ranked up unit which the beast don't have much armour yep that pelt of midnight was it slug skin to in the combat yeah, it's minus one midnight. midnight for shooting at yeah so basically the question for Beastman is what law and level four or level who's going level three but level four or level two or level one 
I've, I've played around with both, like a level four and two level twos. Uh, I found use in both of them. Yeah. I think I think the level four just makes it more... You, you, you're more confident the spell's going to go off because you've got four to the... To, to When you're casting, you've got plus four yeah. to that com, uh, casting uh, value. It so also I, helps out with the spell rolls as well in the same way. Exactly, yeah. Um, but I think they, they, they're both... Because of the laws they've got access to, which is demonology, dark magic, and element elementalism. God, that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, they're very good spell laws. Yeah. And I think well, especially that, demonology, right? Like it's got the the darkening storm for minus two leadership to your opponent. Gather it. Is it not gather? No, it? I think it's a dark. Whatever yeah. the, the minus two leadership. Spell. Gathering darkness. Gathering darkness. Dark, what, gathering darkness. If it's called that, it's that. You've got demonic vigor and demonic vessel, and then if you're just going to be like hanging around rather than doing much, it's got a magic missile as its base level, so you can get rid of small yep. fast cav units or flying units and stuff like that. I think that's a very. I personally like demonology the best if you've got access to it. I I think that's probably my favorite lore as well. I think it's got so much that lends into the beastmen as well so the dem demonic vessel which is plus one strength plus one attack minus one ap on its weapons yeah which really helps if you think about beastmen it's about like it seems to be overweighing overloading attacks like a lot of attacks coming through so you go then they've got three attacks at minus one it's at strength six if they've charged over three inches yeah and we'll move on to that in a second so that's really really good that they can take down most medium uh, armored yeah units yeah no i i agree like i i i like either level fours i i like level fours it seems to be obviously you're more consistent going off level twos less consistent i think you overall get less spells off than a level four even though you you can try twice mm. as often i do i do you know i've tried both but it's a level four seems more than twice as useful to me than two level twos from what I've experienced yeah. now. Yeah. And it's although you're then limited by how many level fours you can go to, so it, it could be then useful having a subsidiary level two or well, level one. Well I think but just to allow you another wizardly dispel somewhere else and So I I I'm not too sure like because we've been playing two thousand points, haven't we? Well we we played a couple like we yeah. played a thousand two fifty. So you can only really take it's either one thousand two hundred fifty, you're taking a beast lord or a great shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so for then me, you play a, a level two bray shaman. Yeah. So I think if you're gonna go like with the level four, look at stocking up with some war gores to give you units that extra punch. Yeah. You're gonna take a beast lord, maybe give him a couple of level twos. Mm. Uh, to to so you've still got some magic, and so you can still try and compete in the magic phase a little bit. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's move on to. Minotaur champion, so you've got Doombull Gorbull for your like Doombull is war, go not he's beast lord level, yep. Gorbull is war gore level, yep. So, like, so hero level, yep. And they're like better versions of those, but obviously will be ranked up at the side of a unit if you put them in, say, like a, a gore unit. They'll be ranked up at the side because they've not got the same size base. So can't get into an optimal position within a unit. It's monstrous infantry. Can monstrous infantry... Because they've got a different size base, you can... Right, so... If you're monstrous infantry... Oh, it's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you can... Way like, so a character that's monstrous can join a non-monstrous unit. Yeah. A non-monstrous character gets, gets crushed and therefore cannot join, join a, monstrous, a monstrous unit. Yeah. Yeah, so you want... Your Wargore can't join a beast, a Minotaur unit. Yeah. A Doombull can, can join, join a Gore unit. But we sat on the flank. Yeah, 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 And sort of, it's then quite easy to... And negate all his attacks and things like that. Yeah, and then he only ends up with one. So, I would go with putting these in Minotaur units as intended. Yeah. Rather than massively experimenting with where they go. Now, they've got... They've got all of the special rules of the the Beast Lord. Yep. I suppose this is just going to come down to what army you're taking into. Is they're, they're hard combat characters. They've got the same 
heavy armor that a beast lord can have, the same shield. You've got a better stat line, but obviously can't hide in the unit as well. If you're in a challenge, you'll do a bit better. Um, they've, they've even got like warband and stuff. It's just going to be a very expensive block yeah. that you're sat in if you're utilizing that warband in any sort of way. I think I think they've got some other things that go with them. So although they have prim primal fury, they do have blood greed. So if you and uh, foe render and blood rage, so the very similar sort of names for the things so yeah. in for blood rage if you roll a double and pass your primal fury you become frenzied and you have a slaughterous call that if you become frenzied your units you've joined also you becomes frenzied and blood greed means that you get two attacks instead of one for frenzy yes right okay so at leadership eight keep going keep this going. is at leadership eight um, they start becoming quite tasty in combat. If yeah. you think that it's got five attacks base, could potentially get seven, and I believe can still roll on Gaze of the Gods. It can. So, so you're looking a, at... What is it, a five? You get an additional attack So looking at eight attacks. Uh, Built-in Armour Bane 1. In yeah, that's if you get Gaze of the Gods. That's maybe. if you... Yeah. yeah. But it's got built-in Armour Bane 1 as well, both the Gorbull and Doombull. Um, they are pricey. You can you can almost get two beast lords for the price of one doom bull. This much is true. This much is but true. But they do look like absolute combat yeah. monsters. Yeah, and that's that's one thing. Phil has been running his beast lord. So, other than like slight experimentation, do you know like the battlefield data for us isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is something that I'm going to be looking at picking up. Well, I think even just a cheap sort of gorbull. For one thirty points, stuck in a unit. Even if you if you put in your gobble into say your best go unit that also contains your um, war beast lord, not war go. I keep on saying war go. If you put him into that unit and then he gains frenzy, you, your lord gains frenzy. Yeah, which could be pretty mental. But right, send to go chieftains. Let's let's do this. I was robbed. I was robbed. <laughs> Now, unlike the Doom Bull Gorbull or War Go Beast Lord, I'm just going to double check that that's the case. Unlike the Beast Lord War Go, yeah, Doom Bull or Gorbull, the Centagore Chieftain doesn't make a unit of Centagore core, which oh, I, I'm just upset, upset about. <laughs> I'd, I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that, my Centagore army. Now, Otherwise, I think it's quite a nice addition to a Centagore unit. Like I've used it a couple of times, just shoehorning it into my Chaos Warriors yeah, list because yeah. it's cavalry themed. So, well, like Centagore fit as a as a force, and they do all right. They it's still not an absolute murderer of a unit, but I think it's good for what beasts need them to be and what I the role I needed them to be in my force. I think. Which is like a fast movement eight unit that could also like get a couple of ranks and output more damage than say like other other people's fast cap. That's what I needed yeah, them yeah. for. Um, the Centaur Chieftain is four attacks. It's, it, it's on the charge. It's going to really help get through sort of like that light to mid armored cavalry. I know there's no medium cavalry as a unit type, but yeah. there are some cavalry that are like. Three up, four up save, where light yeah. cav tends to be five up, six up save. Yeah. So I think this is a really good unit for that. Um, well, you strength five as well with a stomp attack. So you effectively like five attacks. Yeah. Um, so that's the level of a chaos lord. Although you've got like cavalry spear, great weapon. I've got cavalry spear to benefit from your long charge range. Yeah. So then you can be initiative six sometimes. I think that's a good choice. Now, javelins and throwing axes. I actually really like javelins nowadays because you can like throw them 12 inches, your fast cavalry. Like. Uh, ballistic skill three just puts me off on that. And I know that you, you've just used it quite effectively against me, but I think I'm just put off with it being ballistic skill three. No, that's, that's true. It's, I think one of the differences is, is that with move and fire on javelins, you can march up so I can go eight, I can go 16 inches 
with centre go and launch a javelin into you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really good, especially with. Oh, it was there, in fact. I don't have to edit anything. So, yeah, you, especially if you move through cover, you can go through some cover, bam, like javelin into them. And although, unlike, say, like Marauder Horse, you don't get to fire and flee, surprising someone through some cover and throwing a javelin into their face is really good. You can, act, you can have them act like proper fast cavalry. Yeah, yeah. Like running away and coming back and throwing. And there's no downside to that if you just want a small unit of centigo. And this just then allows for 75 points you to have, if you've got a small unit of centigo, having this chieftain massively bulks up the combat power. Do you know the only problem, and this isn't, I don't dislike the rule, I really like it, is that the, the chieftain and the centigo will not do what you want it to do. On the key to On the key to because it's drunk because the drunken rule. Right, so let's go to drunken. He's he's entirely correct. So the drunken rule is at the start of each turn subphase, you'll inevitably forget it. Um, basically roll a dice. On a one, you're unsteady. The unit is subject to random movement, d6 plus two. Yeah. Right. Sobering up, no effect, and belligerent drunks, you become subject to frenzy. Now, it's not as bad as it used to be, stupidity, but random movement can just... Only, like, only maximum of only eight inches as well. Well, that's your normal movement. You I know, any, I know, so you can't person. march or anything like that. You've only got your normal movement. But you can guarantee when you want to be an inch away from a unit to fire your javelin, you will roll, is it unsteady? Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. And I, but I don't dislike that rule. I think that still gives like the sensical like a really fun. Yeah, but they've always element. been like uh, yeah, yeah, like they because they're unholy fusions of man and horse. Yeah, uh, well, the, man and oh, I, but I suppose beast and horse, beast and right? horse, isn't it a be beast and horse? Yeah, beast and horse that hate themselves so get really drunk. Yeah, right? so it's I I like it as a as a chieftain. In an FAQ, please make them so that they <laughs> <laughs> they make sensical troops. So next onto the the infantry core of the list. Best of go, you get not to one of these as core if you've got a war or doom or beast, beast lord. lord. I I keep thinking the war is that. So you get basically thirteen points a model. So you just under double what a gore is. Yep. However, for that you get strength four along with the beastman's normal toughness for a great weapon and heavy armour. M pip more in leadership as well. Oh uh, yeah, you get an extra leadership. You've got heavy infantry, so you only need four fry to have a rank. Yep. Which is good when it gets to your special rules. Of which you've got close order for plus one combat res. Yep. You've got warband, so you add your leadership uh, you add your rank bonus to your leadership. Yeah. Now that'll only cap out at the same Oh, that'll cap out at ten, yeah, which is the same as gore, because you've not got hard. But you've got that inbuilt, even if there's one of you, you've got close order, right? Yeah. Really good. Really good. Um they've got Blood Rage. Which is the passing primal fury in a natural double, gives them frenzy. So your front rank is then becoming crazily killy. Uh, you know, to get the charge off so they can become to our initiative four again with their great weapons, they're yep. going to start chewing through things. I think some of the options you can get for special rules on these are really good as well. Yeah, well, I think the one that stands out to me is stubborn. One point a model, and if you can take stubborn and you've got a big unit or something that doesn't need to be charging all the time or might ever get charged, yep. so anything take stubborn because it's worth that one point of model if, if you've got a 30 strong unit of best of go, it's worth 30 points to give them stubborn so that essentially means once a game instead of rolling the dice for your leadership you instead just fall back in good order I really like having veteran on them as well re-roll panic yeah you, now you've already got the mark of chaos and divided so you actually do that already oh so I really like veteran on these as well uh, the ability just to re-roll your leadership test, and it happens all the time as well. So stubborn's once per game. Yeah. Veteran is all the time. So. Yeah, and I, I think it gives them the ability to operate away from your battle standard bearer, with more both stubborn and veteran, with the like, 
with more impunity yep. to what's happening to them. Stubborn's going to just keep them around by not having to take that test. Veteran will then kick in. And maybe it's getting a lot of points for 60 points to put on in both of these rules. But I think flavour to taste. Like, I, I quite like the auto nature of Stubborn. Would the veteran affect Primal Fury? Because that's a leadership test. It's a leadership test, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that so, means you don't need the Banner of Outrage, which is reroll your Primal Fury. Boom. And you know what you could then do? Use the Totem of Rust, because you've got a 50-point magic standard limit, which gives you minus one to your AP of your attacks, making a total of minus three with your great weapons. Or minus two with your... Oh, no, they've not got Foe Render. Losers. Yeah, so uh, it minuses one to all armour saves within six inches of the u the model carrying the banner. Yeah. So you go to... The, <clears throat> uh, your heavy armour becomes light armour, but you're probably uh, banking on with their high movement, getting that charge, and then forcing those saves from the other people, yeah. which will help... Which the great weapons will just wipe out then anybody's save. Well, I think that's mo it's now what most worth mentioning it, because you brought it up, and it's... Beastmen have higher than like human average movement across the list, but I think it most shows itself in these infantry units where, do you know, like a lone character can dance about, so he, whereas he's in the ranked up unit, and you, this is the most obvious ranked up unit in the list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Gore Herds, do you think it's worthwhile taking Gore over Bestigore? Or would you have a Bestigore unit always? So, I've not used best to go units that much. I've been pouring over it mainly because mine are on 25 mil and not on 30 mils yet. Yeah. I am planning on, uh, in our next game, having a big block of best to go, like 20, 25 strong. Um, but I think Gore have got a, a place of very much like harassing and over... It's not the power of their attacks. It's the weight of their attacks, which I think helps them get through certain units. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that could lead you to have a really wide unit. And maybe we will see, like, sort of units of 40, stuff like that, so that you've got 10 on the front row. Yeah. With four, like, with four deep. But actually, I think you want to be a bit more condensed to use your hard and warband rules to the most effect. Because... It means you'll go from leadership seven with a foe render to leadership ten. Yep. So maybe this mid ground where maybe you're using like five ranks worth of beasts, so that even when they get killed down to four ranks, you've still got that maximum leadership, and then go in as wide as you want to go. I mean, I, I found them uh, in my last game uh, having five wide and three deep was quite good. I didn't think that yeah. they were they were they were bad. I think they performed the job that I wanted them to do. Uh, they're a very mobile unit, even in a block. So they've got uh, open order, which will allow them to move their standard movement and then and do a ninth degree turn. Yeah, they've also got move through cover. Right? Yeah, yeah, move through cover. So put them behind some trees, charge them through. You you might your opponent might be like, oh, they're not going to be near me. But before you know it they're actually in the side or in the rear of a unit, yeah. which I think is fantastic. And they helped out by Warband with that as well, because Warband, and I suppose we, it's on Bestigore as well, and all your characters so that they still benefit from it, allows you to re-roll failed charges yep. with your Gore Herds, that then stacks with Bestial Charge for plus one to strength on the charge. You get in Primal Fury. Yeah, it, it did... I think rinsing anything but Chaos Warriors, I think. <laughs> I think pretty much that's it. I mean, when you've got... You're wounding... Uh, most infantry on threes you've got two attacks well I take them with additional hand weapons so they've got two attacks each I, they're a really really good fast unit and I think when I first looked at it I was like oh it's a gore it's the same as any other gore mm. but when you start like delving into the rules and seeing how they all interlace you've yeah. got a really sturdy unit and 10 of them are 70 points 20 of them are 140 yeah. I mean, they're cheap. Yeah. And I, I think... Like, it, it, you definitely want that rank bonus on your main units. I do think the skirmishers have 
a place though, but maybe not as big units. Because I think the main role of your skirmishers should be to like just like screen and block. Charge redirecting and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like so I would take that thousand points like gore unit that has skirmish. Now ambushers well, we've not mentioned there's a lot of units, all units have ambushes apart. Or a lot of them. Uh, a lot Best of them. Dome. Best of Gore don't, but like all the heroes and lords do, so they can go into these units. So, Phil, what go on then? What is ambushes? Ambushes are where you hold a unit in reserve. Yeah. And from round two, you roll a d6. One to three, they're delayed. Four plus, they come on the board as reserves, but they come on from any board edge that you want. Yeah. Which is so it's, that's going to be great for getting in amongst artillery, in amongst shooting lines. Yeah, yeah. Even really putting the screws on you, ramped up units that are near the back that you're already putting pressure on from the front. It, exactly. And um, with a beast lord, if he's your general, yeah, you can sound your bray horn by rolling your leadership and you get to re roll uh, ambushes. So you, 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 if you roll a one to three. Oh yeah. no, I want that unit on, you can re-roll that as well. I'm just gonna look at this for a second, you continue. Um no, I think it's really really useful. really useful. It's quite cheap. I mean, not to one in a thousand points. Uh it's one point per model, so your gore is still only eight points. Uh so really, really cheap there. I think that's a fantastic way to use them. Um for me, it's go big with a unit or don't bother with it. Yeah. Because when that unit comes on, you want it to be a credible threat. Five go, ten go are not a credible threat. And I think somebody, who, unless there's a lot of artillery think, in the battle. Like maybe a bunch of, like, I think a bunch of skirmishers, because we're saying this not having played loads of artillery against each other. That is true. Whereas, like, you're thinking, oh, I'd get a bigger unit to put the pressure on, like, a combat unit. Yeah, yeah. Whereas against, like, an Empire cannon that isn't toughness four and a dwarf, like, Actually, against Empire Cannon, ten gore are going to rip them apart, and I think I think yeah. that's quite good. Now I was just looking up veteran, and veteran allows you to reroll leadership, obviously. So, if the majority of the models in this unit have a special rule, so if your Beast Lord is in a best of gore unit, you can reroll his horn and bring your gore on more successfully. I mean, you can just see the interlacing of the rules now. How it is like a herd rolling across the battlefield together isn't it like a bit yeah. of a rabble and everything i think that really um comes across um interesting here your true horn not your foe render bow renders your true horn can take a great weapon for free that's cool it's and just something different it, it just should be different it just gives them a little bit more of a killy power in there um I, shields like you see i don't think a six up save is good enough to be worth taking a shield rather I'm relying than... on their toughness four to keep them alive, not that six up save. Yeah, it's too easy to ignore a six up. Exactly. And it doesn't come up often enough that I think I personally... Yeah, deserve. I think the the additional hand weapon, but equally though, with the way the fighting rank works, if you've got additional hand weapon, you only get one attack if you are not in base to base. Yeah. So there's an argument for both. I prefer additional well, hand go weapon. In, if you're going like 20 wide... Take a shield. <laughs> yeah, twenty Cause, wide. Yeah, because you, you're only going to get like five in base to base anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah, and it, and it's worth saying, I think the smaller, more manoeuvrable unit that you're suggesting might be the way to go because of their low armor. And then they've got to split their fire coming in. Whereas yeah. I'm sort of thinking still as like a, a more a less mobile, blockier unit, even marauders. You want a real big unit of them yeah, yeah. to take advantage of that, but you can just move through a woods and avoid all the incoming fire anyway. So next we'll go on to Ungor. Five points a model, so two points less than Gore. What is there to say about these? They've got thrusting or throwing spears and may take short bows. And dropping their shields though if they do. For free. Yeah. Um, would you take them? I think the great thing about Ungor, yeah. it's not their stat line, it's their special rules. Ah, uh, you're going to say Chariot Runners, aren't Chariot you? Runners is amazing rule. If, if when we move on to like the chariots in the beast, uh, Beastman list, um, they're really cheap. 
And Chariot Runners allows you to have a really hard hitting chariot army that is protected by a huge herd of Ungo. Um, yeah. So Chariot Runners, for anybody that doesn't know, is that it blocks line of sight to a chariot, but not for a chariot. And you can charge through and, that And you unit. can charge through that unit. Also, you can use the coherency of the chariot for the unit. See, I don't know. It's not occurred to me yet. If, if you have worked it out, what would be the massive benefit of using it all the time, other than like in a very niche scenario, it, that would just allow your enemy to charge the chariot though, so I still can't work out. I've, if, the, if you've got a certain amount uh, that die, I'm yeah. guessing, and you leave a unit that's out of coherency because of skirmish, then maybe, but this I can't. Very niche. It's very niche. I can't understand why you would want that. Um, you would want them blocking the line of sight to your chariot. So, so basically, then. it's 10 plus for a unit, 50 points, and you can start blocking the chariots behind. That's the main use. Yeah, have. I think so. I think yeah. so. I suppose you could have a very cheap unit with hand, just hand weapon shield, don't upgrade them, ambush them, and like maybe even a big unit, and that's where you get a big unit in and just run into someone from behind with a static combat res. Yeah. And do that is a use for them, but for two points more a model for an extra toughness, weapon skill, primal fury. Um what is what's the plus one's best deal charge? It's un oh, sorry, gore just do that so well. Now one thing that I think are really good, harpies. Eleven points, fly ten, move through cover, scout, skirmish, swift stride. So they're rolling 3d6, picking the swift stride and a normal dice with a cap of 9. So they've got 19 charge. Do I think it's the best unit in combat? No, it has got two attacks. So it's like a human skirmisher. Yep. But having used this type of unit a lot in 6th, and the gameplay mechanic will be the same, charging these from behind a unit at a unit you want to not flee from your charge... At the same time, I say your best of all unit locks their unit in place because they know you'll just run them down with the harpies if they flee. Yeah. And even just having five, so that's 55 points, five is a great use for these. 55 points, throw them in. I would say throw them in. I, 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 I agree. I quite like them. I've not put them on the field yet, but they're initiative five though as well. Which I think is really good to so there on the so charge. Eight, on the charge. Eight, eight more likely on the on, charge. On nine, if you charge into a flank, right? Exactly. So they're gonna go first before most things. It's picking your charges there. So teaming them up with your bestie go, with your go, because somebody will be a little bit uninclined to flee that charge, yeah. knowing that you elf, can elf bolt throw a crew. Yeah, they'll rip through them. Because you get five <sighs> in base to base with an elf bolt throw a crew of like three. Yeah. They'll rip through that. Or is it so, two for the bolt throw crew? So it's two for the bolt throw so it's crew. Four. So it's four. four. So you get eight, eight attacks. Um, you know, hitting on fours, winning so on, on fours. On average, you would kill the elf crew if they've not got any armor. They've got light armor, so you probably kill so them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're killing one or two when you charge them into it. Yeah. Uh, and it just means that as well for 55 points, or if you want to go higher than that and, and take 10 for 110 yeah, points. Well, even... Shooting's going against them and not against another unit. Yeah, if anyone ever puts, like, shots into them, great, you've not shot at my other units. Um, I'm just checking whether they're, they're special, aren't they? Yes, I believe so. Do, do, do. Yeah. Yeah. Harpies. Harpies. Yeah, so as a special unit, you're only using a very small percentage. So... 50% of your army can be special. Yeah, so... I would definitely throw in harpies. Easily overlooked because they look really weak, but just pinning people in place. Say you, your block of Minotaur wants to charge people and it's a maximum charge range for the Minotaur. Or it's just within. They want to flee because they know they'll get out of the Minotaur's charge range. Now they can't because you've just charged with your harpies. Yep. Fleeing it's unit a, it's a really dead. good yeah, yeah. thing. So then on to the unit I was just mentioning, Minotaurs. Now... 50 by 50s now, so you're going to get less in base to base contact yeah. for the full number of attacks. But everyone's on a wider frontage now, so you're going to get more in contact <laughs> for the number of attacks. You've got two plus in the unit, 
And I think there's a couple of ways to do these. It's... You put lots of smaller units out, and, like, because you're re-rolling Panic because you've got Mark of Undivided, lots of small units, and charge and do some damage with your Strength 5, but expect to die. Or one that you just tried in the last game. Big. Which, big unit. Go big. Yeah. Go big. Um, they've got all the you. They've got all the rules that you expect that we've just talked about from the Doom Bull and also the Goal Bull. Um, one great thing is that they've got a full command now, which is great. Um, you can also take mutations and magic items on the Blood. Well, they're people that protect the hordes, aren't they? they yeah. They, the Minotaurs like greedily take it back to their own herds yeah, yeah, yeah. of the treasure it's and keep the magic items around. Blood kind. Blood kind. Blood kind. Blood kind. Um, but they've got close order drill. Fear. So they've, oh, so they've got plus one to their combat res anyway. They're monstrous infantry, so they only need three for a rank. Yep. They've got warband for extras to their leadership after having three on the front rank. Yep. As well as having a doom bull that's leadership high. Eight. Eight. So you only need two ranks before he's leadership ten. Like he's... Impact hits. They're you're also rerolling your charge because you've got warband. Impact hits are also at minus one AP due to bull... Uh, goes. Uh, they've got the blood greed, the blood rage, and foe render. Um, again. So if you get a double on your primal fury, you're getting frenzy. Yep. Yeah. So really, really, really good unit. Foe render again. You minus two AP for your hand weapon. So you could be charging them in. You do this before you choose your weapon. You know, mm. do you know what? I've just got minus two AP. The strength five. I'm gonna start using my hand weapon instead. Do you know what? The picture of the of the minotaur with the shield and axe. Sort of makes me want to take them shield and axe, but would you ever? They only get five. Light, yeah, five light up armor save, no. light armor. I don't think I would do that. I think for three points a model, the additional hand weapon is sort of the way that I'd go. You're going to get like so many attacks with them four attacks base, five for the blood kind. That I don't know. I'd, ju I'd just tear people down with that attempt to tear people I th down. I think I'm, mine are using great weapons at the moment. I am going to be moving towards additional hand weapons and seeing mm. how that works. Um, well, especially with your strength five, you're wounding most things on threes. Yeah. Yes, dwarfs and like chaos knights, you're wounding on on fours. Oh, sorry, on threes. You're wounding most things on twos. Yep. Yeah, but when you come across goblin hard... You'll rip through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> gone. Um, the, these can take ambushes as well. And I have no idea. A unit of two. A unit ambush, of two mate. ambush. I mean, if you imagine that, you've got, I've got six in my army, and I just go two, two, two of all got ambushes, and then no, you've no, got, you can only have one, to, not to one in your army. Oh, is it not to one? I thought it was not to one for a thousand points. No. Ah, oh, not to one. So I don't know what I'll do that, but maybe just two as ambushes, and then it's like, oh, oh here's, here's, here's two my... minotaurs that you can't ignore because they will take apart anything. Yeah. Because they... even they break ranks. Two Minotaur yep. breaks ranks when charging to the back. And it's not just easy combat res like a unit of Ungor would be charging into the back. Even yep. Harpies, when they actually get there, if it's into a proper unit, They're gonna you're sort of whiff. feeding a bit of combat yeah. res. It, but you usually like overbalance the plus two for going into the but back. But these won't, though. No. Nah. These will break a unit if they charge them in the back because they'll get the plus two to their combat res. Whatever damage that they do, Plus their impact Or even is. you could do like four with full command. Yeah. I, th I think this will be... Oh, it's in a unit that I was going to take with ambushes in our last game and I bottled it last minute. And I'm <laughs> interested to see how that would actually work. How it it's an expensive out. unit, but I think it'd be really tasty. Yeah. Enough gushing about them. Yeah. Centagore, yes! Centagores. We all know I love Centagores. So yeah, I'd take the javelins on them one point. I really like that they're fast. They like cavalry, fast cavalry. Drunken, Phil hates them for that. Primal Fury, they're good. Now, skirmishers, I think it's a really good little rule for them. They've already got one attack base. The stomp attacks mean that you're actually quite scary to something that might be trying to get in your back lines. Yeah. And then the skirmishers added to that. And you can add your, your chieftain character. I think they're really useful as a skirmisher because, like, 360 arc. And do you know what? If I don't want to deploy them as skirmishers, you just deploy them as fast cav, 
get a rank and benefit from your warband rule with extra leadership. I think these are really solid for taking on other people's fast cav. I think they're really solid as being ambushers. Okay. But what, because if your enemy moves forwards, it almost doesn't matter because they're so fast. Anyway. Yeah, because they've got a, a 16, 19 potential charge range. Yeah. Uh, sorry, no, they haven't. They've got 16 plus 6, 40, 17 inch potential charge range. Okay. Even if not, if you're giving them javelins, then they're able to move up and then still throw their javelins. Yeah, because um, javelins are moving and fire. Five, yeah. So I think you've got like a really, really versatile unit of coming in in the back lines. And I kind of see that's how the unit in my sort of head would be in real life. Like darting through the trees, you used to hear the hooves or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I would love to have loads of these. Well, I've got 20. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you've got 20. Um, you can borrow them for a nominal fee. Okay. Um, I'm going to start charging you using my Dragon Ogres then. <laughs> you've just sold me some Dragon Ogres. I don't need them. I don't um, need them anymore. But I think these are a really good unit. Really like them. Uh, Drunken, again, it's gonna you're going to hate it when it doesn't come off, but I think it's this is the one unit that I would use ambushes with. The main one? The main one. Because they, yeah. Well, it, Versatile. Phil suffers a lot from me just simply moving up the board to negate his ambushes, and I think, yeah, that gets around it a lot. Yeah. Now, Dragon Ogres. By 20. <laughs> Done. Move on. Yeah. yeah, so they're basically the keys. They're movement seven, not swift stride, semi cavalry things. So they've got, yeah, movement seven, strength five, tough four, four wounds, and three attacks each. Great weapons versus additional hand weapons. I think it's a, a sort of 50 50 on them. The only one I don't get is the Hellbird. I suppose it doesn't always strike last, does it? No. It's just two handed. It, it, so it you just... then become strength six, wounds one toughness fours on twos. But you, you're not getting the armor piercing effect. Of the yeah, brain. it sits for me in an awkward place. I don't dislike it. I just think that if I want them to go up again, with, with their additional hand weapon, the weight of their attacks that they have, or even going with a single hand weapon having ensorcelled we weapons, yeah. they will kill the lightly, lightly armoured things. If I want them to yeah. go against anything heavier, which probably guys have a heavier toughness, I want the great weapons. Yeah, 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 I, get, I exactly get you. Like, Because you're not too asked about the great weapons anyway because you're initiative two. Yeah. So your great weapon, well, most things are initiative four at most. An elf, you're probably not striking before. <laughs> you're definitely not. So... Uh, yeah, additional hand weapon for the extra attacks or great weapon, I do agree with you. I would upgrade to heavy armor though, because then stacked with your armored hide two, you've got your three up. I know you already know this. You might not. So yeah, I definitely go with the heavy armor. I definitely go with the champion. Um just because it gives you that extra. Seven attack. points for an extra attack, I think is really worth it. Yeah. And it's it's a because it's like a shock cavalry unit or a heavy cavalry unit, you need to break stuff fast yeah and when you can get an additional attack it's really useful now what ties into that is your two stomp attacks right yeah auto hitting strength five really really good with armor bane yeah with armor bane. with armor bane because they have armor bane built in yeah so it's because it's not linked to the weapon yeah right? so you your great weapon when armor bane goes off on that will be minus three yeah which is great Oh no, minus four, because... No, they don't stack. It's whatever the bigger number is. Now, we could go on at length about how good Dragon Ogres are. Um, watch the game. <laughs> yeah, watch, watch the games between mine and Phil's beasts. And... Like, just honestly try them out. They are excellent. I would say they're getting on. In a different way, but for Chaos Knight level of yeah. good. I think one of the... The rules here, which is quite unique to them, is the quickening storm. Yeah. So if someone shoots at them with a magic missile or magic vortex, they get a five up ward save. Yes. And if you have a shag off that shoots them with the storm call, they can become quickened. Yes. Uh, which gets them plus one initiative, plus one attack. Yeah. So, so I think you want to, to do that. If you've got a shag off that's around your dragon ogres, I definitely think you want to do that. It's D3 hits at strength four. So you're averaging two hits. 
and then you're averaging one wound, and then you've got a four up save against it, and then a five up ward against it because it's a magic missile. Because it's classed as a magic so missile, so it's like not point three wounds done every time, but you're getting additional attacks, additional initiative. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, Even yeah. if you're using great weapons and it ignores that initiative, it's worth it for the additional attacks. Yeah, I think so. Right. And yet we could gush at length about them. But let's move on to Warhounds. Now this is one that's slightly more... Or slightly less obvious to maybe new players how good Chaos Warhounds are. Six points a model. You've got movement seven, weapon skill four, leadership rubbish, like stats human... Uh, they've got loner, so can't be joined by characters. Move through cover, which is really good. Open order and swift stride, so you're charging. You two d six pick the highest plus your d six maximum of nine. So they've got a, a long charge, but really, what these are for? You plot them down and end up knowing what your opponent is doing. I'd run them in min units of five. Plot them down. I now know what you're doing because I've got more thirty point units than you have cheap units usually. Especially in Beast where you might have a few more like yeah, yeah. harpies which can reposition really easily, like a small gore unit or a gore unit that you don't like here it is in the middle of the woods, not really declaring anything you go. And you've got these multiple units that you can end up seeing your opponent's deployment. Hounds fall into that. And then when the game starts, you just run them in front of something and redirect by like positioning off at an odd angle so i don't know someone's dragon ogres would overrun away oh, from you, a key unit you bitch <laughs> you bitch if you want to see what we're talking about the i i think the video will be out now you, on the patreon you, you bitch <laughs> i can't believe you've done that um yeah so they have a couple of options yes yeah yeah so they have armored hide for one point per model it's a six up save now nah. nah. Poison attack for one point per model. I've got five attacks now. Okay, they've got Vanguard for five points per unit. Most definitely would I take this. It's five points for the unit. So even if you go ten in the unit, it's five points. And that free move before the game starts just allows you to get the drop on people and be close. Like, you're closer to them. You usually don't care because if, well, if you charge my dogs and come closer to my beast horde, yeah, like, I'm gonna charge you sooner. What is it? Thanks. My my thirty, my thirty five point unit of dogs. Yeah, take them. Yeah, exactly. So if they do that, you're a bit happy about it. And if they they don't do that, then you're that much closer to them to redirect better. Yeah, yeah. And it's just amazing. And you, yeah, it's. I I don't think there's. I think dogs have been good in every edition of fantasy. To be fair. Yeah, and it's. It's not that obvious because they're a bit of a rubbish unit, like rubbish, but they're good because they're just such chaff that are also fast. I have 42 of them. He has 42 of them. So, on to Razor Gore Herds for 52 points a model. These are special rather than called at Warhounds were. They're one plus in a unit with three wounds, toughness five, strength five. Um. What to say about these? They've got Armor Bane 1, Impact Hits D3, Open Order, Primal Fury, Razor Tusk, which is minus 1 AP, and Swift Stride for charging a lot, like Cavalry. Now, I think these are also best used as like Diverters, like Warhounds are, and potentially, if you've got multiple of them, smacking them into the side of something, I think he's going to be alright. I just don't think they are going to be like amazing shot cavalry. Again, maybe like Centagore, they'll be good for driving off your opponent's fast cavalry, but I think Centagore do that better. I think that these actually will be really good at hunting really high armoured uh, units. Okay. So, a Go on, raise, convince me. Right, a Razor Gore's got armour bane one. Yes. Okay. It has Primal Fury and Foe Render, so it then gets minus two armor piercing. Yeah. If it charges, it also gets minus one armor piercing due to its razor tusks. So it's minus three on the charge with also then strength five. So wounding most humanoid models, elves, on twos. So it wounds them on twos with a minus three AP. 
Well, how big would you go with your herd to do stuff like that? So it's also got D3 impact hits on this as well. So I think I'd probably do three of these or two of these. Mm. Um, you wouldn't go like five of them. No, no, no. I wouldn't go massive. But I do think that there is an absolute worth in this unit. I, I suppose two of them would be getting eight attacks. Yeah. Oh, so you've thought about this, haven't you? You've properly thought about this. So, we're, you know, you've got eight attacks, four hit, three wound... You've got three dead models, yeah. pretty much. And I think this unit is going to surprise a lot of people when you go, what, it does D D3 impact it. So it's got the chance to ping off a, a model as well. Before anyone strikes. Before anyone strikes. And then you're like, what, it's, it, it's minus three AP. Oh, yeah, I got a six to wound. It's now minus four. Yeah. But I also think these are going to be really annoying for just having like a ton of, and in the same way as Warhounds, plonking in front of good units and just being like, you go over that way, but yeah. also these like slightly have the chance to actually win that combat. And with open order as well, you can start lining up those charges really good. Movement seven, 90 degree turn. I, I've i not used these yet because Razor Gore are like rocking arse. You just can't get hold of them. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really keen to run like two units of two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like bop, bop. But they're yeah. not to go in a unit by themselves. They're there to like force multiply another one. So, oh, so if you are running into a unit, it's alongside something else. Yeah. So Say get like a Tusco Chariot. A Tusco <laughs> ch Like a Tusco Chariot. Or if you've got the rank bonus from your gore, yeah. put the Razor Gore in with the gore because then it'll be like, right, they've got the D3, two D3 impact hits because I was taking two. So they've got potential to get rid of that front fighting rank. Mm. You go, then are unmolested. You raise a go, then can then start chewing into it as well. So you're properly thinking of these like light chariots yeah. rather than... I think I think that's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking like these are like chariots really. Yeah. But they've got Swift Stride, which is something that the army kind of lacks. lacks. Yeah, outside of the centre go. Yeah. It's an interesting take. I can't can't argue with you at all because all the rules are there. So we're going to Tusco Chariots. Now, these, both these and Razor Go Chariots, let's do them both at the same time, right? Because um, they're both sort of similar, but one is a lighter version of the other. But they're both heavy chariots. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Which is why, like I was saying, like the Razor Gory, you're thinking of it like a light chariot. Yeah. These are more like heavy, or these are heavy chariots. Now, do you think that one is better than the other, or do you think they're just different? And I mean, obviously, the Razor Gore is stats wise better, but do you think one is usage wise better than the other for the points? I think they've both got a place, really. I yeah. think they've both got a place. The Razor Gore, again, can take on more heavily armored units. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's got first charge as well. Yeah. So if you are running into something with hard. You can deny their rank bonus they're both, adding to their they've leadership. They've got first charge. Oh, they do, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So the Razor Gore. You forgot about that in our game. I did completely. Um, the Razor Gore Chariot is good at taking on heavily more heavily armored units, so t sticking it into a unit of knights. I yeah. think the Tusco Chariot lower armored units. Uh, I like the Tusco Chariot because it's got warband, so I can reroll my charge. Yeah. The Razor Gore Chariot doesn't have that, but you've got more chance of having more impact hits. Yes. So they, they've both got a place, uh, and they, they do very different jobs, even though the stat lines look very similar. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. When I, I have a Razor Gore Chariot painted and uh, so converted... For, yeah, which is the ride of Phil Gore? Phil Gore is going to be pimping on a Razor Gore Chariot. So you don't think he's, like, hammer of bonking? Is enough. He needs the razor go. Yeah, I mean it's 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 four attacks with a potential of minus. This is pimped out minus now. three just from the uh, AP on the razor go, and also you've got your toughness five there as well, yeah. which I think is huge compared to the Tusco chariot because the Tusco chariot's on the toughest. Well, it's gonna the difference between that is like magic missiles tend to be strength three or strength four. Yeah. So toughness five making them wound on fives and sixes. Is such a big difference because look at how I annihilated a chariot of yours. Yeah. In just, our game one, by just using a magic missile, gone. Eighty-five points for a Tusco chariot though, and it's a core 
unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this this is a bit why I've been looking at them because I, in an Allies force, I wanted a way of getting Centaur as core. I can't do that. Oh really? I, I, don't I need know. to get. I know I'd keep going on about it, right? I need to get to my core limit as yeah. fast as as with as little troops as possible. Tour score chariots, having one of them as core, I think really good. Yeah. And and Beastmo have done that for quite a while. It's been through a few editions yeah. where your core would be a load of chariots. Yeah. And just impact hit the hell out of people. I mean, eighty five I've got five. Yeah. I've got five. And I've not run all five, but I'm kinda of thinking that's where thinking I'm, about it now. I'm thinking about it now. Five Tuscor chariots, I think, is amazing. And then taking that with a huge Ungor herd. herd to just protect them for just a turn. Now, there isn't a model for the Razor chariot, right? No, there isn't. Oh, there's not a model. So, basically, you just, you're getting a Razor Gore for your conversion. Yep. Yeah. I took... Uh, I've got a Razor Gore. Yeah. I've taken an Orc Boar Boy chariot. Yeah. I've caught... Not the old... The old, the old games workshop ones. I basically cut off the uh, yokes on it, and I've used modelling chain, fed it through a Basti Gore's hands to hold chain around the razor gore. Right. Okay. So it's just conversion work at the moment. Um, yeah. Whether a model comes out for it, we don't know, do we? But I think the razor gore one's really good as well as the tusk gore one. Yeah. And we've got the razor gore model itself. Yeah. Dragon Ogre Shagor. So it's tuned in 25 points. Leadership 9. It can have a Brayhorn, you said. No, it oh, can no, have... Brayhorn. No, it can take one magical... It can take a magical weapon of up to... Magical item up to 50 points. So it can take an enchanted weapon... Enchanted item, horn which is of the first Horn beast. of the First Beast. Just read that one out there. So, unless the bearer of the horn is fleeing, friendly units within 18 can use their leadership for Primal Fury. So it gets you another bubble of Leadership 9, right? Like on top of, well, I, I I think as well. Once you 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 go have leadership ten from being in a hard, and stuff like that, you might be relying on that less. But if you've got a load of chariots, having the shagger, is uh, massive. Your razor go is where this comes into play. Cause their leadership six with this now the leadership nine. So that's more likely going to come off. Your chariots, which are leadership seven and have no way of getting a higher leadership. This now helps them. So why are you putting it here rather than on your beast lord? Because he's got a higher leadership. Uh, he, so he's got a higher... <laughs> well, not, if, if the beast lord is in a ranked up unit, you could put it there. Now it does... Suppose it does give you another bubble of leadership spread. So your beast lord in a ranked up unit, leadership 10 because of warband, is over one side of the board. The shagoth is fast and over the other side of the board. Yeah. So I, th I think because it's just the base leadership's nine, like you can get leadership ten with the with warband. I just think this is a good it's way, more reliable. More well reliable. Well. Yeah. I'd I can go into a skirmish formation with some of my units, and they can still get primal fury off without mm. having to worry too much. So that's definitely where I've come with this. Um, well, I think these are good. Even if you sometimes use to be even if because obviously. Having it on there doesn't limit your beast lord from doing anything, so he can still go in ranked up and yep. be that leadership bubble. And also, this is a pretty curly character, and it's because it's five attacks, leadership five attacks, six wounds, strength six, weapon skill six. I've just done that in reverse order, <laughs> but is it is a very killy character? It can have a great weapon for four points. It's got armor bane two built in, armored hide two. It can have heavy armor for that three up, like a dragon ogre. Now, the one thing it can't really do is join a dragon ogre unit, because but he's like a giant, right? He's like a giant. Got ensorcelled weapon, so if it's using a hand weapon, it's at minus one. Stomp attacks D three plus one at its strength six. That have armor being too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's a really solid model. One thing that I would be careful of is run it into a ranked up unit because because of its low, I say relatively low, because of its low unit strength. If you run it into a ranked up unit that's got say hard banner, three ranks from the hard. Yeah. Your their static combat res is four. If they've got close order somehow, like I think 
all Brett peasants have close order. That's this static has, res five. This has close order. R right, so but still, it's four. Yeah. Combat res static against you, and you might just run. So yeah, so instead of four back. The in four, order. the four wounds that you're going to cause are wiped out by their static combat yeah. res, which means that when it come when they attack back, more likely you're going to lose probably one wound. Yeah. This will run now because you've just lost combat to something that's double your unit strength. Yeah. So what we're saying is put it in there with something else at the same time. Yeah. Don't just throw it into a full ranked up unit and expect it to take them down. Whereas say a unit of dragon ogres, a lot of the time, because they've got like eleven attacks or what is it, ten attacks for the three with yeah. a shard attack, a lot of the time they can just rip through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um it's got a bound spell as well which is storm call which is like a, a, a magic missile which you can even use when it's engaged in combat yeah which is strength for uh, d3 strength for minus one ap it also hits himself which is how he gets the quickening so he can get an extra attack ah so it then goes up to six attacks so he goes and six it's all all units within six yeah and or four yeah so keeping him paired up with some dragon ogres yeah yeah he can go into a weaker unit, maybe they go into the main and one. Then you do or that. if it's a super tough unit, you both go into that. Uh, yeah. Unit. One of the, that this is until Max brought my fun. Um it can also take chaos mutations. Yes. Now there are there's a couple that I think are outstanding for this model. Go on. There's Gorge Tusks, which minus it gives you an extra minus one AP to your hand weapon. Yeah, so within source of weapons it it's will be minus, minus two. two. Is also uh, and then with armor bane two, you don't really need any more than that. No. The same as a great weapon standard, and you've got strength six, so you're wounding everything on two. Yeah, yeah. And then it's also got uh, I think another one is, um, is it many armed, many limbed, or many arms? Many limbed arms. Many limbed arms, which gives you an extra many attack limbed with things. a hand weapon, essentially. Um, and that will then tie into your ensorcelled weapons and yep. the other mutation to give it minus two. So then you're on six attacks, seven if you've got Quickening Storm. Yeah. Still not enough to take down a ranked unit, I don't think. You might no. do with a bit of luck, but you're wiping other things yeah, much it, it, more easily. It, it starts becoming like a big combat monster. And there, those two together, I think, are like 25 points. And for me, there'll be 25 points that I'd always put into well that. Spent. Well spent into it. <laughs> Well, right. spent into it. So one that we were just talking about before doing this guide. So go on, run us down the jab. The main points of the jabber slide. Phil. Right. So it's got quite high strength, toughness, and wounds, all being five. It's got five attacks and his leadership nine. So quite good stats for a beastman army there straight away. Um, it's got a plethora of skills. The special rules. The special rules. So you know. Close order, fly nine, large target, maddening aura, poison attacks, spurting bile, blood, stomp attack D3, swift stride, terror. Right. So the fly, really good for repositioning your unit. Mm -hmm. That then ties in with its maddening aura, right? Yep. So maddening aura is any enemy unit with an 8 inch of this model fleeing or engaged in combat must take a leadership test. If failed, suffers D3 strength 3 hits with no armor save or regeneration. And that's every command phase of the turn. So you position it in one turn, it does it in the next turn, um, and it's just going to be relentlessly happening. So it's... Although it's more expensive than most other sort of like, fly, like light flying units, it's going to be doing... It's a big monster that's flying over the enemy... And doing stuff out of like out of sequence yeah, without yeah. you having to risk yourself, even. So yeah, go on. Um, it's wicked claws, strength user minus two AP, so that's not a slouch there. It's because that's the same as a lance on any knight. Yeah, slithery, slithy, slidey, slidey tongue. Is. Um, twelve inches range, strength five minus one AP. But the best thing about this is it's moving, shoot, and quick shot. So you can double, you can march, so yep. you can fly your 18. Yep. And you don't take a negative for moving because nope. it's quick shot. <laughs> and then, yeah, you 
kill just, a just, night at a time. Just, just kill something at a time. Um, yeah. And also, one of its r- rules as well for the spurting barrel blood, for each wound this model loses during the combat phase, the attacking enemy unit suffers a strength 4 hit with an AP of minus 1. Yeah, so that can happen, obviously, a maximum of 5 times. If yeah. it happens the 5th time, you've lost combat anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are always getting back your enemy. Exactly. For any wounds. I think this is like a really good sort of harassment defensive unit because people will probably think twice before just throwing something into it. Yeah. It, you because it'll it'll rip through most things. Mm. But then you've also got the thing is like, well, what do I do with it? Because if it don't get rid of it, it's just killing. Yeah, things. I do think I would struggle to deal with this with my current army. Yeah, because you're flying out of your charge. I don't even have to attack with it. Mm. I can just plonk it there. You're now eight inches now. you D3 minus one. Now you need to move out the way of that. Yeah. And I could just follow you around doing yeah. that. Um, sure. Your light cav, which I struggle with in particular because they're very mobile. This thing, I think, is the massive answer to that one. To light cav problems. Light cav problems. Yeah. Well, maybe you need, need more centigrades. Always centigrades. <laughs> Always the answer. So next on to the Cockatrice. So the Cockatrice is 170 points. It's got Fly 10. So we just get the movement, right? He's got Toughness 5, 4 Wounds, Initiative 6, Attack 6. If you were just saying how you've looked at this one quite a lot. I have. These are the things that are there. So you can upgrade it with Acidic Vomit. Yeah. And also with Poison Attacks. Now it does have enough attacks to make Poison Attacks quite worthwhile. Um, being six yeah. being six but then it has no AP at all on any of its attacks for using those six attacks right okay so I'm not too sure whether that's worthwhile for it is the acidic vomit oh no it's a breath weapon so this is the thing now so yeah. you have stony stare which is every model must make an initiative test that's in base is it base to base with it Yes. Uh, and, it, and if they fail it, they take D3 strength, two hits with no armor save permitted. Regen and ward saves can be taken as normal. Um, so against a, a knightly order army, which is like obviously base human, they're failing half of those initiative tests. Yeah. And then on like they take D3 strength twos each. Yes. And it's each model. Yes. So it won't spill through the unit, right? No. But... Yeah, these like, like one one point through, not point six will die. Stop. For everyone that fails the initiative test. Yeah. I mean that's just something uh. that happens. Yeah, yeah, which is which is always nice. And it's at the start of each combat phase, so it's not even when you're selecting that unit to attack. By the way, it's just at the start of the combat phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they won't be able to attack back. No, because they're dead. Because there's no step up. And it could be like you've got this thing charged, and it'll just kill one model which doesn't sound great but it, you know it's, it's so there for like, free you don't like this model or this this unit the the thing that i i find really confusing with it is the petrifying gaze and acidic vomit ah uh, you see i think this is another one that's like hunting light units that you're do you know that you said you're having a problem with those fast cav i know it's 170 points but that's only like 60 points more than my fast cav unit or probably a bit less than that i think they like 120 for my fast cav. And this is going to get six attacks at strength four, so kill my fast cav on threes. In addition to the stony stare, it's going 19 inch charge like harpies. So it's another thing that can lock down units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and also, this can do something when it gets in. I, I just don't get, like, the petrifying gaze is a shooting weapon. Yeah. And your acidic vomit is a shooting weapon, and they're pretty much mm. the same weapon apart from the petrifying gaze is ignoring all your armor. Yeah, and your acidic vomit well, like, like isn't. no shots really. It's yeah, only it's, one I, I shot. It, it's only one shot. Yeah, I that's guess. what I mean. Like it's it's one shot versus a template. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, think of it like a gyrocopter. I'd rather. I would. <laughs> gyrocopters are horrible, right? This is one of them. I would say. And just good in a different way in that he's got six attacks rather than the gyrocopters too. And the gyrocopter has heavier armour. Yeah. And again, one of my problems here is not 
I, I need to play with this one more, I need to use it more. It's because they're like, again, rocking horse. You cannot get hold of a cockatrice at all. Yeah. I don't know anywhere that sells one. So when one comes up, I might look at getting one to start using and playing a bit more. At the moment, I'm not like enthralled of it straight away. Yeah. Now, the Saigo. Oh, God. <laughs> so for 215 points, you get like a giant -y stat line, strength, tough, strength 6, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, weapon skill 2, though. Um, and you can lob rocks at people, it's basically, a, is the mechanic. Yeah, it's a mobile stone thrower. Yeah. Which is sounds great. Uh, stone throwers for me have always got the issue. I don't like stone throwers because they always seem to miss the target. They're right. not reliable like a cannon. They always just seem to scatter off. Well, like two out of three times. So one out of three times they're hitting. Just maybe you have maybe you've had the same experience as I had with my Stormblade in thirty k, which is every time I rolled that dice. It's, Theoretically, a really good tank. Yeah, but like it just disappears. Every time, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've just not had a great. Um, I think, showing with it. I think the rules that it has, uh, ghost light, uh, which is during the combat phase, a psycho may reroll any failed rolls to hit made against enemy wizards, uh, or units equipped with any magic items, or enemy models or units with a ward or regeneration save. Yeah, it, they might as well have just said it's got hatred everything. Well, he's got hatred <laughs> magic, right? So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. enemy models or units equipped with magic items or enemy models with water regions. But most like, things have got one or the other. Well, a lot of them has, but say your gore wouldn't have them. Or True. just a normal unit of Chaos Warriors True. Um, One thing is, it's a stone thrower that's going to sit there. Although, like, you didn't have great success with it. One thing that I couldn't do is take it out in the game that we played. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... I, the stuff that usually hunts war machines isn't going to be hunting this. No. Because this is going to batter them. Yeah. It, yeah. It'll hit on fours and then just, well, I'm t I'm strength six, squash, squash. Yeah. Like, so we, I think that's the problem is it, it will be taken on by a cannon maybe, but not by like flyers or fast cav. Yeah. I mean, if you threw harpies into this, it'll make a mockery of them. Yeah. And that means the cannons aren't going to be firing at you you ranked up units or things like that that they might normally want yeah, to yeah. fire into. I think that's the benefit of this. It's not just a direct benefit, but the indirect benefit of not targeting your other units. What do you think about the Soul Eater rule on that? The Soul Eater rule? Enemy, enemy wizard wishing to cast a spell within 12 of one or more Saigors must first make a leadership test. If failed, basically they don't cast it and you uh, roll on the miscast table for that wizard. I probably I think it's a nice little addition, but hopefully there's not been too much points weight put on that rule, because how often are you going to have your stone thrower within twelve inches of an enemy that's, wizard? That's it, isn't it? It's a little bit at odds with where you're going to go with it. So if you're if you're within well, you could be at the twelve inch mark, and you'd have to be at the twelve inch mark. Yeah. So you could then shoot this at that unit. Or well, you could use it at a different unit because it's just a one rule that goes off all the or time. Or maybe we're approaching it in the wrong way and it's not a stone throw that's hard to kill. Maybe you run forwards with this thing. throw, Or you walk forward seven inches a turn throwing stones and then charge something like a giant. Yeah. Like a mini Shagoth. Like, do you know, like a, a, a poor man Shagoth. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the one. Interesting. I need to play around with this unit. It's definitely a fun one to use. Yeah. I think that is... It's also uh, like nothing else in the list in that it's a piece of artillery in the beast. Yeah. And it's it, like the Hell Cannon in Warriors of Chaos. Well, they don't have anything else like this. Uh, exactly. Um, if you take a Great Brave Shaman, it becomes a special choice. Not to one. That's so decent. that helps you take more rares. I think that's quite nice as well. So... Mm. So, on to the last thing in the list. The no, it's not. Is it not? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, the, the Gorgon. So anyway, the Chaos Giant. 200 points. <laughs> You've got the standard, the classic giant table. These always used to be either infuriating that they would yell and ball. And yeah. Just win by two automatically. Or do nothing because they were like toughness five. or tough, Yeah, toughness five with no armor. Now, these aren't toughness five. These are toughness six. 
So that's actually quite a big difference. A, fire, a fireball is wounded them on sixes rather than fives. They're also now not stubborn, they're unbreakable, so they're never running away from a unit. Yeah, they <laughs> kill things with timber, which is where they fall over on things. They've got stomp attacks, which I think is a big boost. Yep. D6 stomp attacks at strength six gives you a more reliable giant at killing things. But you wanted to say something about specifically Pickup. <laughs> so I think Pickup is hilarious for this. It has the potential... And I'm not saying this will ever, ever happen, but it has the potential to mm. wipe out an entire unit in one turn. So you can use the giant attacks and roll on the table. Yellen Ball's actually gone now, by the way, which I think is great. Yeah, well, they, they, all, they all allow the enemy unit to, to do, do something. something. Yeah, and they're all attacks now as well. Yeah. Uh, which I really like. Uh, some are really great and some are not so great, but like, like I think. Belly flop. Place the small blast three inches uh, over the model. Any whose base lies underneath suffers a single hit at strength six, AP minus two. So he's just belly flopping yeah. into the middle. <laughs> um, but pick up, you forgo your giant attacks, and then the enemy, one enemy model does an initiative test. If it fails it, you pick it up and it's dead. Then you're in, you're an initiative two dwarf. Bop. Dead. Dead. Then you can decide to do it again. On a one to three, you don't do anything. On a four plus, they have to do an initiative test. You then pick up another one. Dead. Dead. <laughs> and and there's literally nothing that the person can do about it. So if you can just get those four ups all the time, because the dwarf is going to pretty much fail his initiative two. Yeah. yeah. You're all just going to be like, yeah, that's dead. That's dead. That's dead. And I think that is where I find this hilarious. It'll never happen, but that mm. one game when it does, please record it, because it'll just be like, whoop, there we go. I I could it could literally take out 20 people in a turn. Yeah, well, it could also take out none. None. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that is the, I suppose the randomness of giants. Yeah. That has always been there, and he's very fun within the unit. So I think this is... Even uh, if reliable. I think it's just hilarious. The the continues the giant is what he's doing he stops making attacks or until the target unit is destroyed. And when I was moved from play, I consider to have been removed from the fighting rank of the enemy unit. I think it's brilliant. I just think <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely hilarious. Um but if yeah. anyone can get one of the new giants from Games Workshop on a 55 50, please let me know. Oh no, how. that's the 50 minimum. Yeah, no, so but... So you could have the old Orc and Goblin Giant. Oh, maybe. you could do, yeah. And then Although, 50 by 75 right, is for the, the new one. one. Yeah. But I think this would be absolutely hilarious. when so, If that goes off, just taking the model off the model. And th off. this is one of the things I've been not really mentioning because I think the people that have come here for the Warriors of Chaos bits like know what units they want, right? But this is one of the ones that you can take in the Warriors of Chaos list, like, along with Dragon Ogres, Dragon yeah, yeah. Shagar. I think this is a really good one. A really, or at least a really fun one. I think it's a Let's, fun unit. Yeah, that's what I mean by good. And that's how we've sort of been trying to approach looking at this. Because, I mean, the tournament guides will be coming out independently. <laughs> not Probably not by us. And in about six months. Because it, when it all settles down and everyone knows what they're doing, yeah. rather than ranking up in four wide units, that I don't think we're going to see much of anyway. So... On to, now actually, the last one. The last one, the Gorgon. Um, so, if you take a Doom Bull or a Gore Bull, this can actually be taken as special. So, this is like the Cygore that isn't throwing rocks. Yeah, it's the one that's got all the limbs that are like taped, uh, sorry, all the blades that are taped to its limbs. It has like four limbs. Uh, mine doesn't, mine only has two, because uh, I didn't like it having four <laughs> limbs. But it has four limbs, it has blades attached to it. And it's basically like a mutated minotaur giant. Right, okay. So it's... Is it like 50-50 between a giant and a... Because all of these big things are sort of like dragon ogre shagoths. Yeah. Right? Now, what would make me take this instead of or as well as a dragon ogre shagoth? Right. So this, this here has got a higher toughness, toughness 6... Rather than toughness five. Rather than toughness five. 
Yeah. It's also got a lot of the rules that makes it better. So, uh, like in combat, so it's got blood greed. It has frenzy as standard, primal fury, regeneration, stubborn, swallow hole as, as well. Stubborn is very important in that you can just choose to fall back, back in good, good order. order rather than rolling for anything because you're not you don't cause fear or anything. Yeah. So so not fear. <laughs> you cause fear. You're not unbreakable or like anything like that so stubborn you've not got shield walls so if you get charged with knights you might just get knocked back because you hire what I was saying about the dragon of Shagoth being more unit strength mm -hmm. or less unit strength than a ranked up unit this won't suffer from that no no so um, it has got light armour yes and it has got regeneration 6 up so most of the time you're just going to be relying on that regeneration 6 at 6 up Swallow hole rule, I think, again, this is kind of hilarious. This bit yeah, here. so basically, you pick a, re an, a regular infantry or heavy infantry unit, um, and the unit must make an initiative check. So if it's failed, it grabs a victory from the unit and stuffs it into its mouth. The one model is dead. If it's passed, the attack has no effect. And because that happens in the command subphase... Um, of its own turn, it basically means that it skips out that, that combat step where you can get a reply. It means that my Chaos Lord, during your command phase, could just be grabbed and eaten. So this is the thing. It doesn't tell me how to select the model. Well, it says one or more units engage in combat with one more, or more units, nominate a unit yep. and do it. So one model would just be selected from the unit as per. So I'm guessing you would select the u the model. Yeah, you just take, the, just you, you, you just give it random, random ranking. Whereas rank. if a single character, say like a character that can't join another unit, like a Bretonian Lord that might have multiple wounds on their lance or sword, charges this, you go, oh, I didn't die in your in your turn. It's now my turn and I've got one wound left. Oh, just take Eat. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the main reasons to take this over probably a giant is the fact that its cleaver arms have killing blow and monster slayer. Right. So, so monster slayer is essentially like if you roll a six, monster death. Yeah, and killing blow is exactly the same. So one's for infantry, one's for behemoths, and monstrous cavalry and monstrous infantry. Right. So this can go into anything. And if you're, it's got six attacks, so you five attacks, sorry. So you're likely to come up with. It's got frenzy, so six. Six, okay. and it's got like half hit. So yeah. then you've got a not point five chance of just killing whatever, like killing a giant. Yeah. Even throwing it against a chaos law, just fishing for a six, cause if he's oh, on a, if he's on a dragon, he's yeah, a behemoth unit type. So. So he still has the ability to just gank him. Just gank him. Yeah, and it's initiative four. So if it moved over three inches during that, that initiative charge... Initiative seven. It, initiative seven, higher than a Chaos Lord. By Chaos Six Lord. Six attacks. It's also got... Notice uh, how Phil is looking for things to kill Chaos Lords here. Yeah, exactly. Um, blood Greed, which is, if your Primal Fury is on a double, it gets Frenzy. But you've already got Frenzy. But... You, Oh no, it gets two attack modifier for having frenzy. Yeah, there we go. So he's got seven attacks. Seven attacks. Frenzy. Yeah. So it's it's a solid investment. I think it's worth it's <laughs> like any of these big creatures, they either go really right or really wrong. Yeah, there's no And I between. think we've not also had enough my instinct is, oh yeah, cool. It's got stubborn to go against a ranked unit. It can bash in there, it's got like seven attacks from frenzy. It can slay these monsters. My instinct is, oh cool, it can it's versatile, it can do that. Now, because they can go so wildly right or wrong, or just get nailed with a cannonball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I th I think th these are the ones, like rather than gore, where it's just like their mainstay, they've got hard warband, they're gonna be leadership ten, I'm gonna have a load of them. Where you can make more of a snap this decision like that. Yeah, yeah. These are more like I don't know yet, right? Yeah, I think I just need to play with it a little bit more to see how often it comes off that it actually does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. But it's really interesting unit, and I think it's definitely different to the big... The three big monsters, yeah. Saigor, Giant, and Gorgon, are all very different. 
Yes. Which I think is really great in this book, that they've been able to do that and make them all feel and look different. Yeah, true. Um, so shall we close it out there? We've given a little bit rundown, like the, the mutations, horrible combos, we'll leave to someone else. Yeah. Like we've got... Like there's a few that stick out. We said Slugstin, Pellet of Midnight. I mean, Gnarled Hide, if you've already got a good armor save, increase it by one. Like that could be... Like it could take your shag off to a two up. Many Limbs, you've already said you love that one for a Shagar. Rune of the Beast Ascendant, I think he's very good if you're not going as heavy into Hordes or Warbands. Because if you're in a Horde or what, like if you're in Horde with Warband, you've already got a good leadership. You yeah, don't yeah. need another one. Um, so if you're going more skirmishing, good. Muscular Monstrosity is expensive. At 35 points, I'd probably just take the Hammer of Bonking. By which we mean the primeval club. To do you know like to do that? Punk. Yeah, because then you lead, you 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 strength ten because of your leadership. Um I think Crown of Horns to gain stubborn on a unit of say like gore. If I had a war go with a banner, say I don't know, just plucking one off the top of my head, and I've already used this as an example, the totem of rust for fifty points. Go with that, minus one AP, and then I've got to, um, what did I say, Beast Ascendant. No. The Crown of Horns. Crown of Horns to be stubborn. You run into my beast, don't care as much. I'm just going to take the take the wounds, I'll get you next turn. I'll flank you. Mm -hmm. Getting stubborn in a specific place that you need it is really good. Having an additional instance of stubborn, rather than your best to go, is really good. I think this would be... Like, do you know what? This has now been Serial Killer Monologue about the uh, the mutations, and I think it, it's because all of them have their place. Yeah. And it will be tailored to how you set up your army. I think all the mutations, there are some horrible combos in there. There are ones that people will be like, oh, do this. I mean, just for one, I was talking to you about doing Slug Skin and Bedazzling Helm. For minus two. two to hit in combat, which basically makes a break dance, break dancing beast lord. Yeah, so slug skins the fifty points. I think that's all the allowance into it. Yeah, and then bedazzling. How much is bedazzling hell? Sixty points. And plus, so you can't one combine it with the club of bonking. No, you couldn't. But you can combine it with a great weapon. And if you're getting minus two to hit you, I can I can go with a great weapon. Exactly. Yeah, like he's. There's, there's plenty of them, and now is the time to experiment rather than us tell you, do just this one. Is I think what I, be, I think. I think it'd be down to your playstyle, very much down, and also like. And what you're trying to do with that character exactly? Yeah, 50, Fifty point slug skin on a beast lord on a chariot, it looks good, but it affects the entire unit. So is it better putting it in a gore unit, best of gore unit, in a, you know, center gore unit? It all depends on what you want that character in that unit to do and it's going to be down to personal choice well do you know what I sort of think is that the only one that you definitely need is the generic magic item that lets your sorcerer lord choose all the spells they want <laughs> <laughs> law familiar is probably yeah. a really good item that is probably my gonna, gonna, gonna be my go to for any level 4 magic caster yeah. 30 points pick the spells I want I could pick the ones that make it so much better for Beastmen to be good in combat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we'll close it out there. If you have enjoyed this content, don't forget us to drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, check out Phil's upcoming cast, the resurgence of the road to Reichland. I need to get t-shirts made. Yeah. And there is a Patreon link below where you can check out ad-free videos, podcast versions of these, earlier versions of all the videos dice and a tray and we're out <laughs> see you in a bit <laughs>